name's Lifka. I'm an acrylic painter and I live in Mount Dora, Florida. Um, I participate in art festivals and galleries and I also am a uh, painting instructor. So I thought I'd put a little thing online um, due to the pandemic and everything just to get my online instruction, try, try to warm up to it because I hope in the future I'll be teaching an online class. So I'm going to demonstrate how to paint people. It's one of my favorite lessons that I um, put out there for everyone and everyone seems to love it. So I'm gonna do a quick little painting demonstration on um, how I paint my people in acrylic and it's really easy and don't be afraid to try this. Also, the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna show you how I get my canvas ready. This is a canvas I bought at the store. Um, any paint store you can get this. It's pre-gessoed, you don't have to gesso it, but I never paint on a white canvas. I always paint it um, red or orange first because it is a really nice mid-value, which means from light to dark, it's right in the middle, and it kind of makes the paint just pop out. Plus, it's not so intimidating to start painting on a canvas that already has paint on it. So what I do is I always use just a simple sponge brush from the hardware store. And I put a little bit of my paint on a paper plate. I don't mess up my whole palette with that. And I just kind of slap it on. It doesn't have to be perfect because we're going to paint right over it. So, and don't put too much because you don't want to have too much paint built up on your canvas. You just want to have enough for underpainting. Really easy, except for it's not very sturdy. There you go. And that's it. That's all there is to it. And then you rinse your brush off because you can use it over and over. And, um, and then when this dries, I will begin my painting. So I'm gonna take a break for a second and I'll let this dry and I'll see you in a minute. Okay, we're back. I've got a dry canvas. And before I start, I wanna tell you a little bit about my palette. I use a, um, this is called a Masterson palette, but any kind of a, a flat, even a Tupperware kind of a thing. It has a wet sponge in the bottom and then it has the paper on the top. You buy all this at the art store, or you could use wax paper, you can make your own. And the wet sponge and everything, and with a lid on the top, it keeps your paint wet for weeks. Weeks, I'm not kidding, a long time, so you don't really waste your acrylic paint, and that's a wonderful thing. So um, that's what I wanted to tell you about the palette, and you just keep it nice and wet. That's why I have a spray bottle with me all the time. Nice and wet. And I love to paint with angle brushes and usually um, acrylic oil brushes with, at a sharp angle like this um, are my absolute favorites and I can work really easy. So, okay, so um, I'm going to show, demonstrate how to paint the figure in acrylic and you're going to like this a lot. It's fun. All right, are we ready? I'm going to start with, um, I'm just going to show you, when you do a figure, you, I don't draw my people. I make them solid, almost like I'm sculpting them. And this way I can get them in the kind of gesture or position that I really want without worrying about the contour. So this is the head and it's always a football or egg shape so that, um, you don't want to make it round because the person would look like an alien. So, and then you're going to do the torso, all solid. And I'm using Hooker's Green, which is a really deep dark green. It's number 225 in the Liquitex brand, but it almost looks black, and I love it. So this would be like the torso, and this would be, and I'm going to run out of room for his feet, but that's fine because then we don't have to paint feet. This is the uh, pelvic area, and then... all the way to the knees, the legs to the knees, the thighs, and then the cap down. I picked up a little yellow paint on there, but that's okay. You know, it's really important when you're painting to be relaxed and also to um, not be afraid of making a mistake. 
because you, you just need to be brave. Now there's my um, figure, and I, I don't know, I just read that, that that's probably male figure because of the big shoulders and uh, a narrower hip. So this is the next step I always do with my people. When they're wet like this, I kind of take white and I'll just paint right over it. It's going to pick up a little of the dark underpaint and I'm just going to put some clothes on, just like paper dolls. One quick layer. It's really important to get a fresh look in your painting, not to rub and rub. You just want to kind of put the brush stroke down and let it be. Oh, it looks like he's got a skirt on. I don't, I don't like that. I'm going to make that. I'm just going to wipe that off. They're down that shorts. And if you're going to put a hat on them, you don't sit it on top of the head. You just kind of put a line right through the head and then paint the top. So there's kind of a, a man um, just standing there. So I'm just kind of showing you how I approach it with the paint. Um, next, I'll do a, a female. So she's going to be standing right here. And her shoulders are not as wide because she's female, but she is because she's, see I keep picking up yellow, which is fine, wider hips. And then her legs coming down like this. Right off the bottom, we don't have to paint feet, that's great. And we'll put some arms on her. You know, sometimes I'll paint two or three arms on each side and pick the one I like and then paint out the other ones. Just paint right over them. So there's all kinds of things you can do. I'm going to put some clothes on her real quick. Now, you know I'm painting fast and because I'm being recorded and I usually do this when I'm demonstrating, but you can take your time. You don't have to. Uh, being quick is not part of the process. It's just I'm just showing you how I do it. And then I'm going to put one of those little, I don't know what you call them, scarves or little thingy over there um, behind her. So there I have my two people so far. And then what I usually do is I'll cut around them with some sky. So if they were outside, I could just kind of give him some softer shoulders. You know, whatever you do, if it, if it smears, if it's, I like it if it smears, but anything you do and you feel you've made a mistake, you should just really keep moving on. And when it dries, you can go back and repair it. So uh, it's, it's not a big deal. I always tell my students, just move on because you'll have other mistakes coming up too. So just keep going. Picked up a lot of paint right there. So now I'm going to carve a little profile here for her. Just with my brush, you can see how much I love this brush because it's got such a sharp edge. I can use the corner of it just to kind of carve out the shapes that I want. Now you can see as this white paint is drying, it's soaking in, and, and acrylic paint dries darker. So it's soaking in to um, where the dark paint is, the hooker's green paint. It's soaking in, but that's fine because when this dries, um, I'll be able to pop in the next layer and it'll be nice and bright. So I paint the whole background around. The bigger the brush, the more area you can cover and the freer your painting will be. Those little tiny brushes will make you crazy. Use a small brush to sign your name. That's all I have to say about that. <laughs> so, um, now I'll, I get into the details a little bit at the end. I'm gonna pop some water in the background and I'll tell you, I love this color. It's the um, phthalo green. 
I was terrified of it when I was a watercolorist, but as an acrylic painter, and then, you know, I love it. I add it with a little white, and it's just beautiful, especially against this orange. Look at that. Ah, love it. So they're standing along the ocean in my world. If you're, you know, if you're doing water or, um, you know, some kind of flat surface, you kind of want to make your brush strokes go in horizontal. And then I take this other color that's beautiful called Naples Yellow. It's kind of like a butterscotch. I'm just going to finish up the bottom of this painting with that and it makes them look like they're standing on a beach. What do you think she's telling him? She's yelling at him about something, I think. I don't know. Here goes. You know, it's gotta be fun. It's just gotta be fun. And you'd be surprised how much you can paint from just your kind of an imagination. We don't always have to be looking at something and copying it to be good in art. Just go through your days looking at things and memorizing them as you go. More sky. So I'm not gonna, um, Um, I'm just about ready to finish. All you have to take the sky and cover up all the orange with that blue and then let that dry. So that's what I'm going to do. And um, I'm going to take this, what I do, and I'm in Florida, and if you happen to be up north, maybe you can't do it because it's getting colder, but I'll tell you the best way to dry your painting is put it in the sun. So I'm going to take this outside, put it in the sun for about five, ten minutes, and then I'm going to be ready to show you the next step. So stand by. See you in a bit. Hi, we're back. Um, I just brought this in from outside and it's totally dry. I'm telling you, it's so important. And I tell my students this all the time. They don't have the patience, but let it dry in between, um, you know, uh, layers, I would like to say. Because when you're painting on dry paint, the paint will adhere and be the color that you want. If you're painting on top of wet paint, it's just going to smear and... Uh, become kind of a big mess. So this is dry. So I'm gonna show you the really fun, the best part about this whole thing is I'm gonna take some white. I'm gonna load up my brush with some white and a little bit of Naples yellow. And that's that butterscotchy color. And that, it gives the white such a, and I really, I mean, I really load my brush up. And I'm going to imagine that the sun is kind of coming in from the left side. So. Look at this. I'm just going to hit the left side of his clothing with this white and Naples yellow kind of combination. The side of his hat. Look how that just stands out because it's dry. If I did that when it was wet, it wouldn't, it wouldn't uh, be as bright. Let's do her. And you can see that red peeking through. I don't really think about it, but the fact that it's coming through is always nice. And that's what gives this painting life. It makes it pop. So you can see we've got the, the sun just really hitting them. And um, I'm going to do the left side I mean, their left side, but their right side of them with a little bit of, I'm going to take some brilliant purple, which is really a lavender color, and some light blue, and maybe tone it down with a little bit of the raw sienna. Just kind of get a shadowy color, and I'm going to go in on the shadow side. Objects or people 
in the sunlight have extreme shadows. Just, just a little heads up about that. The light is so strong. And I'm going to show you how I do their skin. Now, um, I make all my people like this, and even if they're lighter skin people, I still start them off with the dark form, and I build up the lighter shades to whatever um, shade I want. I want them to be dark because I love the uh, island people, and I love the contrast of their beautiful skin tone against the bright tropical colors. So I'm going to go back in with my Hooker's Green and maybe add a little bit of raw sienna, which is a uh, brown tone. And I'm going to go in and kind of redefine his, his arms, his, his face. With the dark, same with her, give her a little bit more form. I'm just tucking her hand behind her so I don't have to paint her hand right now. So I'm just kind of hiding it. Oops. Cut that out again. Um, then I take, i got to finish the legs here, then I take um, raw sienna, which is a lighter brown. I don't use any umbers, I just don't. And I'm going to pop that in the skin in some areas. It would work better if it was dry, but I'm not going to do that right now. Just kind of change and add in a little tone. And um, I need to paint the sky around them again, but I'm just kind of showing you. I'll go get that. Oh, look what I just did. Wipe it off. That's why I always have a rag real close by. I'll repaint that. I need to go back to my bigger brush. What I was just using is my next favorite size, which is a half inch angle brush, acrylic or oil. The brand I really like, I'm not trying to advertise for them, but maybe I am. Uh, I use the Princeton brand. But I notice that there's other brands out there that are just as good. See, I'm going back in with the second layer of sky. So, you know, our people are starting to um, really pop out and it's kind of exciting. They're just kind of telling us a little story that they're on the beach having a conversation which she's more involved in than he is. <laughs> it's, uh... Oop, just came over the arm a little bit, but that's fine. So um, I'm not gonna you know, have you watch me paint every little brush stroke against the sky, but um, I'm gonna recut out her face again. You kind of see how that works. Just sometimes it doesn't work so great, and you gotta just keep trying until it does. Sometimes it can turn out pretty funny. Um, there's not a lot of detail. Uh, that's when we get ourselves in a lot of trouble if we don't. This is just this just kind of tells the story as it is. Now at the very end, I mean, and I would finish painting the sky and probably go back in here. Oh, one other thing I would do. If this is the ocean and that's kind of a beach, I'm going to take some white 
and just kind of go along here on the edge and just kind of like that could be a wave breaking right there. Sort of like that. Um, I'm going to take my little half inch brush again and I like to go in with and normally when, it, when they're dry again, but I'm going to take some red, and it's a cadmium red, it's a, a warm red, cadmium red medium, and it's nice and warm cherry red, and I'm going to pop that on the side of their skin where the sun would hit it. Look at all that beautiful warmth against the cool sky. So you can kind of see how that just really warms up their tones. And then you can add some little tiny detail, I mean just some fun detail at the end, like maybe give her a, a little ring like that, a little earring. And, um, and that's about it. But I would probably go back over, give another coat to my water, my sand, and of course fill in the, um, this guy. We can't really, you know, he almost looks like he's, you know what, now that I'm looking at, He's looking at her. He's looking out, I think. What do you think, cameraman? <laughs> I agree, and I'm camera woman. <laughs> yeah, well, <laughs> um, that's just your position. So, um, I think I'm going to make him looking out. So, I'm going to drop this hat kind of back here in the behind him. Now, already, that's kind of saying more that he's looking out that way. I don't know if I like that. So, yeah, they're having a conversation. You know, you could almost put uh, you know, maybe he could have like a fishing pole or something in his hand that or he'd be holding. So something like this. It's not quite connecting. But you get the point. So anyway, something like that, but so he could be, uh, you know, doing something. So um, anyway, basically that's, that's it. This is my lesson on doing people at the beach. And uh, you can try this. And I also want to say that um, we're, my partner and I, her name is Jane also, we are doing, um, we're going to be uh, making a uh, continuous kind of, I'm going to do art lessons that you can um, download and keep, and I'll be covering all kinds of subjects, and my lessons will be about an hour long, and um, we're still working on that, so this is just a little preview, and stay tuned, follow my website, janeslifkagallery.com, to find out more information, how you can order your classes, and uh, I'll see you then. Thank you. Bye.